And welcome everyone to an NABC chat. I'm Andy Katz, pleased to be joined by Talvin Hester, head coach of Louisiana Tech. And Talvin, you guys are picked to win Conference USA. Uh, I, I did my picks for March Madness. I had you guys as the choice to win this league. You guys have been right there on the cusp. Um, you've done a great job of managing the roster in this new era. Um, tell me where you are in terms of uh, your level of optimism for this group. Uh, I think we're still learning how to manage these rosters. Um, I, I think we have talent. I, you know, I, I feel, I think every coach at this time of year feels like they have a roster they could possibly win. We're all optimistic. Um, I think that the, the preseason ranking of number one, I think that's, I, I tell my guys all the time, that's really not based on what we've done. It's based on uh, our past and a few of the guys in the room are still back. So uh, we got to go earn everything we got. And, uh, we're optimistic that we have the talent. We we still have to learn um, uh, what it takes to win as a group because we get a new group every year, essentially, uh, at this time. And so I don't. I, we're not where we need to be right now. But uh, I remember a long, long time ago, I, I, I bumped into Nolan Richardson and got to talk with him, and he said, "Remember, it, it's October, uh, and so you want to be playing your best ball by by late January, February. So we're it, it's a it's a process, and we're on our way." All right, so let's go forward before we go back here in, in that um, the reality of the current Conference USA right. is it has been a one-bid league, which puts a lot of pressure, whether you're the one seed, two seed, doesn't matter. Um, what's been the most difficult part uh, recently of crossing that threshold in that tournament, regardless of what happens in the regular season? Uh, uh, managing emotions of the regular season. You know, last year um, we ended up playing a, a game, the second to the last game of the year, which in sense was the championship game for the outright conference championship. We ended up losing uh, um, that game. Uh, and I thought our emotions were carried into the conference tournament, even though we won the last game of the year um, and finished in second in the league. I, I think that we couldn't get out of our funk and we started off great and, but we were ne we were never the same team after that loss. So we have to manage the emotions and understand that um, we we play to the end. And um, when you do that, when you give yourself a chance, uh, we have to make the most of a chance. We gave ourselves a chance. We gave ourselves a good seed in the tournament. Uh, we have to go out and execute and understand everything in the past that, that's in the past and kind of move forward. Um, I try not to talk about um, uh, so much future. We do understand what our goals are, and that's our future talk. Uh, but I really try to focus on the day to day and falling in love with the process and winning today. And if we can win today and not look too too far forward, then I think we can stay on the right path. So, in terms of you know putting this roster together, and you talk about guys coming back, you know I think it's someone like Daniel Bacho, um, who you know was at Texas Tech, um, obviously had great success uh, in this era of retention. Um, take me through that. What was that? What was that like to return a player like that, especially a post? Um, I, I think his path helped us. You know, it, it was at Arizona before Texas Tech, um, and because of all the unfortunate stuff that happened uh, during that time period, we won't talk about it. But uh, then he comes to Texas Tech, where I'm an assistant at the time. Uh, we built a relationship, and then one of my assistants built a relationship with him. Um, I think he had had enough of of not being um, a relied upon. So when we came here and we loved him up and he had a big role, uh, that was part of the way we got to keep him. I know we're, we're living in a day and age where people want to throw dollars, but he had already had that experience. He had already had the experience of I'm going to compete with like six guys that look like me. Uh, and I think he loved the fact that this town is all for him. And this university is all for him. And that in this league, he could be preseason player of the year. Um, and I think he wanted those things and not to go start over again. And it was a lot of conversations. And don't get me wrong, you know, he's a young man, too. And, and thoughts came in his head. And, you know, is this the right thing? Should I, should I not go back? Can I accomplish my dreams here? Uh, um, but we told him, you know, if, if you just worry about today and, and becoming the best Daniel by George can be, whether you're here or not, you're still one of the best big men in the country. Uh, and so, so that's what we wanted to try to show him and, and, and put him put, you know, kind of put him out there as one of those. By the way, over your shoulder, uh, you've got a <laughs> professional basketball player who came through Louisiana tech. 
Uh, I'm just curious how much he has helped in this process. Uh, a ton. Um, and, and I and I don't take this lightly. The, you know, the, the new structure of NBA contracts has helped schools like us so much. What I mean by that is the exhibit tens, the two ways, um, there's more roster spots. And in the last three years, we've had Kenneth Lofton Jr., uh, who actually played on USA Basketball with Chet Holmgren. Yep. He, he did it from here. He signed here as a freshman. Uh, and this year, we got a kid named Isaiah Crawford on a two-way with the Kings, who was player of the year last year. Uh, that's giving kids opportunity to say, you know what, it can happen from here. And, and I tell Daniel Bacho, you, you definitely can be the next. And so for a school like us to have three guys that are, get legitimate NBA contracts in the last three years, uh, I think it shows that uh, go, go where you're loved. Uh, and and to be honest, if 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 they if those guys would have kind of did a little more, you know, coaching's a part of it, and 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 got us maybe to the tournament, or we would have got to the tournament, maybe they would have been on a bigger stage of show, and maybe get drafted. But they got the workouts. They, you know, Isaiah had twenty plus workouts. Junior had twenty plus workouts. I, I don't think those NBA guys. I think they know what they're looking at, and those guys got an opportunity. That's all you can ask them. So uh, he's helped out a, a ton. I mean, he's always here. Uh, he comes every summer. Um, he loves being around the guys. He was mad the other day. I didn't call him about our banquet uh, that we had. But you know, you don't think about it at the time. You think he's busy and he's doing things. But he he's been a, he's been a joy to have. He's been a great ambassador for our university. Well, and that's the thing I think sometimes people forget is in these smaller communities, mm -hmm. um, in this NIL collective era, the school is still the thing. Um, there may yeah. not be high dollar, you know, uh, in, a, in a major power four, power five school that has big time football. But with it's very hyper local, I have found in some of these more remote schools where the school is, that's the outing, that's the social outlet. How that's has that worked for you at a place like Louisiana Tech where that's what they care about in that local community? You know, we've had a lot of success, whether it be, you know, Mike White, Eric Kunkel, um, that were here. And one thing that you always see is their players are always back here. And and this is one of those places that when you're a student here, you're saying, I'm never coming back to Russell, Louisiana. Once I leave, I'm out of here. But you find that that those players come back. You know, those players are so attached to here. They're so attached to the community. Um, they're so attached to the people around because, you know, here they're a big deal. Uh, and some people never get to experience being a big deal. You could be at, you know, schools in the city, cities like Miami, Chicago, you know, New York, where you're 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 a college basketball player. But here, uh, we don't. The Mavericks are three and a half hours away. The, the the New Orleans Pelicans are four and a half hours away. The Memphis Grizzlies are four and a half hours away. So our guys are a big deal to our to our community. Uh, and to say that, you know, they kind of embrace it, and when they leave, they realize there was a sense of pride that it was attached here. And and it's not just them. It's it's all the players that came before him. Carl Malone still lives here. Um, you know, Paul Millsap is from right down the road. These are all PJ Brown. Um, you know, we, we've had a lot of success with guys that look like that. And uh, we just want to continue the tradition. I don't, I tell people all the time in recruiting, I, I don't know what it is, um, but we've had a successful program. And I think this community backs it and uh, we'll continue to just want to be a part of it. I'm blessed to be a part of it. And if we can get over ourselves and understand we're just a piece of the process along the way, uh, maybe we continue to have success here. All right, last thing for you, to get to where this team needs to be, you know about Bacho, who else has to certainly early in November, December, emerge like Crawford, you know, to, mm -hmm. to keep you guys where you need to be as one of the top two teams in Conference USA? Don Newman Jr., he was an honorable mention all-conference guy last year. He's our point guard. You know, I told people last year he was going to be dynamic for us. He led the league in assists last year. Um, he, he'll be back this year, and I, I expect big things from him. In practice, you can see the development from year to year, uh, him growing his confidence, him growing understanding of what we expect of him, him growing and kind of being an older upperclassman instead of a young sophomore. And so uh, I expect him to be dynamic for us. Uh, we do have some transfers that I expect to come in and, and impact winning right away. And I think that's the reason you get transfers. Uh, otherwise, we'd all take freshmen. But um, uh, Amari Abrams, who was at Ole Miss in Georgia Tech, uh, who was actually Kenneth Lofton Jr.'s high school teammate. So I'd been recruiting him for years when I was at Texas Tech. I recruited him, and I recruited him when I got here. Um, Will Jeffers, that came from Pitt. Uh, University of Pittsburgh, um, we expect a lot from him. Caden Cooper from Oklahoma. 
Um, and, and down the line, we got some Juco kids, Al Green. We we just expect these guys to come in immediately and impact and, and, and help our young people. We think we got some young, talented freshmen. Uh, A.J. Bates, I think, will be dynamic as a freshman out of Houston. But but he's going to have to learn from these older guys. And he's going to have to take Landry and Blocker. going to have to learn from these older guys. And then the one I probably hasn't brought up is Devin Reed. Devin Reed, who, who came from Louisville, he played with us last year. And he's taking a big step. You know, I'm, I'm tough on Devin because I think it's a lot in the tank. I think it's a lot in there. Uh, and if he figures it out, people are going to have problems stopping him. He's a guy that can stretch the floor at, at a high level. Well, I can't wait to see this team. All the pieces together, I'll be calling that icons of the game at Nassau Coliseum November 13th as you take on UMass, which I think will be a great, you know, it's going to be on MSG. It'll be a great uh, early season look nationally for your group. What do you think? You know, excited about it. You know, where scheduling has changed. You know, uh, in past years, you were able to go and maybe play a couple guaranteed games and, and, and tighten and toughen your schedule up. But but it's not like that anymore, especially when you have a little success um, and the way the the net is viewed, um, it, it's changed. And so we had to find some games that we felt like challenged us before conference. And I felt like playing a great coach like Frank Martin uh, put on a stage where we felt like uh, our university belongs and we can get some um, um, uh, notoriety for the job that this university has done backing our program. And then, uh, then a great test um, for our conference because if we want to win our conference, we got to compete in situations like that against teams like UMass. And so we're excited about it. Um, uh, we don't want to look ahead because we got a couple games before that. Uh, but once it comes time, we'll do our scouting. We'll do what we need to do, and we'll get ready for that game. All right. Can't wait. Appreciate your time. Thank you so much.